Hi everyone. Today we will have our conscious dating practice group and that starts at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Central time, and 1 p.m. Eastern time. And today we'll be discussing the art of playfulness with Dr. Eileen Scholes. And we have Eileen here to tell us a little bit about what we'll be exploring in the group. So I am going to go right now and she'll give us more details on what we'll be exploring today. And you can sign up for this group at <laughs> humhum.space slash schedule. Good morning, Eileen. Good morning. How are you? I am well. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you too. Yay. So I let everybody know the topic that we'll be exploring in the group. Uh, so feel free to just share what we'll be diving into. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, we're going to be talking about the art of playfulness today in our conscious dating group. And, you know, why is playfulness attractive? Why, why do we even do it in the first place? Because it, it feels good, right? We're going to explore, um, and actually there's some research from the University of Pennsylvania that shows that, you know, playfulness is a signal of positive qualities and potential long-term partnerships and long-term mates. It conveys a non-aggressive vibe to potential partners, and it can indicate youthfulness and fertility. And in the Journal of American Play, it was discovered that many adult humans continue to engage in play well into their older years because they notice there's a lot of benefits to it. So research shows that a fun-loving attitude may improve communication with potential partners, family members, um, business partnerships, and just in general. Laughter can improve health and has been linked to a healthier immune system. Humor can be a good option to cope with stress. Some research shows that laughter can actually reduce physical pain, and we know it can reduce emotional pain. Playful people seem to get better grades in school, which is interesting, right, if you think about it, because so many times the class clown is considered not so smart or not so bright, but playful people have been linked to better grades. So I guess it's all about boundaries and knowing when to play, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> reliving funny moments when you are in romantic partnership has been linked to strengthening the relationship between two people. So why are humans playful? According to evolutionary theorists, play is not necessarily necessary for survival. So that's really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Play is not necessary for survival, and yet we do it. So some researchers believe that play could serve as a signal to potential business partners, romantic partners, um, friendships, that, you know, this is, this is a cool situation. This person is somebody that I might be able to trust, I might be able to work with, just introducing the element of play. And, you know, friendly reciprocal play with others might demonstrate a lack of aggression. And this is important when tensions do rise and you're, you're experiencing conflict or you're noticing um, that you're not on the same page with someone, actually introducing a little bit of lightness, levity, play can actually reduce the aggression and help the two of you get back on the same page and or the group communicate effectively. Imagine with everything going on in our world, if we were just playing every day. <laughs> Yeah. soccer and baseball and swimming and roller skating and you know chess and imagine if every day we were incorporating a lot of play I would imagine that our collective nervous system would calm and that we'd actually be able to reach healthy solutions to a lot of the world's problems so one poll showed that people think playfulness feels good in part because it makes us laugh and who doesn't like to laugh right have you, have you ever had one of those deep belly laughs, one of those laughs where it, it just lingers long after whatever made you laugh was funny, but you just can't stop. It's just now it's in your bones. It's in your blood. It's in your cells. It feels so good. You know, I'm talking that bent over crazy, ugly face, tears coming out, just 
<laughs> God, I'm laughing. It feels good, right? Like even right yeah. now, it, it's so fun just thinking about laughing like that. And, you know, just it, it supports many relationships by keeping variety and fun and curiosity in the relationship. Some research shows that it makes sexual intimacy more pleasurable. Wow. It alleviates stress and anxiety. It takes the focus off of insecurities. And so for those of you who are just joining, we're talking about the art of playfulness. In the right settings, it can add to conversations and strengthen communication. It can sometimes alleviate tension even within yourself. We talked about tension in groups or tensions with another person, but it can also alleviate tension within yourself. Imagine if you're stressed out because you have um, to give a talk or you know, you've know you got some financial issues or you've got to go to the doctor to get some tests done. Imagine bringing in a little bit of playfulness before you actually go into that experience. And, you know, this goes into brain work, because if you think about it, if you create neuropaths that are light and um, feeling good, there's the possibility that your whole immune system and your cells could respond very differently than they would if you're uptight and angry and pensive and frustrated and stressed out, right? So creating those neuropaths, continuing to remember neuro reprogramming is happening every day with every thought and every action. So certainly if we incorporate playfulness and lightness and levity and joy and fun into most situations, then we're going to create new neuropaths um, and find solutions and make decisions. We're going to launch from that playful place, which actually creates diaphragmatic breathing because you're having fun. It's very right brain. So when you're having a good time and you're relaxed and you're not overthinking, you begin to breathe diaphragmatically, automatically, which means that the brain is being oxygenated. When your brain is being oxygenated, you're able to come up with solutions a lot faster. And you calm your nervous system, you keep the amygdala, which is the fear center part of the brain, relaxed. You don't go into fight or flight, or if you do go into fight or flight, you're able to pull yourself out pretty quickly, which means you're not excreting too much cortisol. Cortisol is great, just like adrenaline when there's a real emergency, but we don't want to have an overabundance of it in the body because as a side, too much cortisol will create weight gain, insomnia, and actually more anxiety. So we don't want to, you know, do that. So um, playfulness, it can strengthen a sense of emotional safety in many settings. It can be a gentle way for people to feel comfortable around you. Smiles, laughter, the diaphragmatic breathing tend to accompany playfulness. And so in today's conscious dating group, we'll be exploring styles of play that mostly, you know, originated in childhood. We're going to look at like, you know, what was your style of play? Were you aggressive? Were you competitive? Did you share your Barbies? Did you have to dominate? <laughs> no. You know, did you have to win at all costs? And were you a sore loser if you didn't win? If you weren't picked on the team you wanted to be picked on? You know, all these things impacted the way we played as children, and it does play out in our adult lives. And so it's really interesting to begin. It's fun, actually, to explore our styles of play. Were you super shy? Were you super engaged? Did you have to be the captain all the time? You know, all these things are so interesting to explore. And then to notice, well, how does that show up in my relationship? How does that show up with my siblings? Am I always competing with them? How does it show up at work? Do I have to dominate? Do I have to be first? Do I have to? Or am I comfortable sharing? Do I share food in the lunchroom? You know, do I share my, my adult toys now or do I hoard them? It's so very interesting to see our styles of play and to see how it plays out now in adulthood. So play begins in childhood and contributes to our communication styles. It also influences our ideas about power resilience, strategizing, self-importance, working with and trusting others, competition, ambition, drive, winning, succeeding, holding grudges, resentment, and I could go on and on. How play is modeled in our families and communities absolutely contributes to our thoughts about it when we incorporate it you know, whether we think it's a good thing, whether we don't think it's a good thing, whether it's non-existent, very existent, too existent, over-existent, 
Um, obviously, you know, if we're going to incorporate play, there needs to be boundaries um, so that we are aligned with the setting that we're in and the situation that we're in. And, you know, we're also um, observing the, the people that we're interacting with and what their level of tolerance is for play. So there's, there's a little level. If you're, if you're going to engage, you know, with community, there's a little level of responsibility in terms of considering the other, right? But when you're by yourself, I say have fun, fun, fun. Do everything that you can to just enjoy um, your experience. And imagine approaching everything with a playful attitude. So, like, I was thinking about when I was in high school, I used to study to classical music, and it was great. You know, it helped me get great grades, kept my mind sharp. But by the time I got to grad school, I was a little sick of classical music, although I knew at that point that the research showed that it really does help your mind stay sharp. So I incorporated classical music with hip-hop beats. So I had I would listen to music while studying and writing my term papers or whatever to really beautiful classical music with some awesome hip hop in the background. And it was so fun and it kept my brain stimulated. And it was kind of like I was at the club while I was doing my work. (laughs) So introducing playfulness. And so as you think about play, what is play for you? You define what that is and what that looks like and your willingness to be playful in situations. You know, it, it does activate a level of vulnerability and openness to some degree, it's a recognition and acceptance of your own authentic primal nature. And that's beautiful, right? To own it, to own that primal nature and give it space to breathe and be. Let your shadow out sometimes through dancing and through certain music that you play and, you know, I roller skate and just all the things, dancing and singing and swimming. And, you know, it could be soccer and it could be football and it could be crocheting and it could be baking and Just having fun, you know, using flowers and the food that you cook. Just really create play and you define what that means and recognize that play, playfulness is a beautiful portal opener into heart space of self and other. It really just opens us, doesn't it? It really does. This is why we do icebreakers at the beginning of meetings and events because it just relaxes. Even if you hate icebreakers, let's face it, once we do them, we're all pretty <laughs> chill, right? We're kind of relaxed because that was kind of interesting. That was kind of fun. This is why we like, um, what are those things? You know what I'm talking about. Um, little things where you're not scavenger stuff, but like just any kind of playful thing, anything that sort of, you know, creates the mood, sets the mood, sets the tone, mystery dinners, the criminal element in theater. You know, why do we go to plays? Why do we why do we like dramas? Because it's play and it allows our brain to kind of imagine and to go to other worlds. And so um, metaphorically speaking, I see playfulness as sort of like a delicious appetizer to coat the palate before you go into deeper nourishment. So play in all situations, whether you're approaching, how do I pay my bills in a creative way? How can I stabilize? How can I maximize my efforts? How can I improve relationships? How can I be a better version of myself? How can I incorporate more affirmations? How can I make physical fitness more fun? How can I, you know, incorporate healthy food in a playful way? What can I do, you know, to spice it up and make my life more playful so that I can be more relaxed, nervous system calm, engage in relationships in healthier ways. And so what I would say to that, as you consider all the ways that you can incorporate more play into your world, knowing that it does absolutely strengthen you, it strengthens your relationships, and it can create a paradigm for peace and relaxation, consider incorporating healthy play by being inquisitive, be curious, be excited, be optimistic, be positive, be expansive in your perspective, and be creative as you approach any and all situations. Stay playful, have fun, laugh, get that, try to see how often, like can you at least once a week get that deep belly laughter where you're rolling on the floor, snot flying, ugly face, tears crying because something was just so funny. And even if it wasn't that funny, It felt so good. You just kept laughing anyway. Play, 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 and play. (laughs) This is what we're talking about in our conscious dating group today. Hope to see you. Much love.
Yes. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> and that starts in 40 minutes. So if you guys want to join us, we're starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. And you can sign up via the website, link in bio, under humhum.spacelabschedule. And Eileen will be uh, elaborating on this topic and we'll bring your voices into the room and hear how you play. And Eileen, I was thinking about how play can also be an arrangement. So changing the arrangement of your day-to-day -day routine so you don't get into a rut like, oh, yeah. I do these things the same way. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like all the things we think about of play as like an activity, but simply like changing the arrangement, like shuffling the puzzle pieces of the daily yes. life. Yes, and this is why like when I do ceremonial altars or ritual stuff, this is why I change it up. And I change my, my living space. I'll move things, I'll move flowers. It's just, that is also a style of play, right? Like playing around with um, interior decorating and things. But I want to say one other thing before we leave, because I just thought about it. I've been in, was in clinical management for many, many years. And one of the things we did for years at one of the, the places of work that I, I worked at was we would have meetings outside of the office. Sometimes we'd go to the river. Sometimes we'd go to a new coffee shop. Sometimes we'd go to the racetrack. We would go to um, farm to table organic restaurants. We would incorporate play at the job. We worked hard and we played hard. And those of us that were in management, you know, thank you to our executive, you know, director and our associate executive, executive director who really thought play was important. They would incorporate that with the coordinators and managers and um, the leaders of this particular organization. So we would go do fun things and not everything needs to cost a lot of money. Sometimes we'd go to a park and have a picnic and have our weekly meetings there. So for those of you that are in management or lead groups, consider getting out in nature, considering changing it up, doing fun things to just um, keep that playfulness in. It really makes the workload easier because the nervous system is calm. You know, when you know that you can go and, you know, do your work outside on the green and then come back and see your clients or your customers, you know, or make your phone calls somewhere beautiful, looking at beautiful trees or a body of water. It just comes. That's play too. Yeah. You know, adding a little cinnamon to your sliced apples. That's play for me. <laughs> I love it. Yes. In every moment, right? Because that's what counts the day to day. <laughs> Amazing, Eileen. So we will see you back on Zoom at, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So if anyone would like to join us, I see Marie there. Marie is our Hi. other uh, conscious dating coach. Uh, Hi, Marie. So yeah, we and thank you, Michelle. You I saw your comment. Thank you so much, Michelle. I love you. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. And if you'd like to join the group, go ahead and sign up. Uh, and it's by donation. Thank you, Eileen. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.